I'm sitting here uh, in my jammy pants and uh, down in the basement so I have on a thicker shirt. Uh, but anyway, uh, stuck inside with the coronavirus thing going on, uh, just for, you know, history. It's uh, the middle of April, 2020, and uh, stuck inside. So, I built these speaker cabinets. So I'll step aside. So, uh, a year or two ago, Marshall came out with these mini Silver Jubilee, and uh, that was the amp that I kind of always wanted, a Silver Jubilee. But one, uh, they're expensive, you know, on the uh, vintage market and everything. And two, they, uh, they're loud. <laughs> you know, I mean, a 100 watt Silver Jubilee head, and then, you know, of course you get the matching cab, uh, or cabs, if you're going to do that. I mean, if you're going to get the 100 watt head, you might as well get the cabs, the two, uh, and have the whole matching set. Way too expensive, and like I said, way too loud. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not playing uh, stadiums, so I don't need it. So when they came out with this, I grabbed one. And I got the matching cab, uh, the 212 horizontal one, because the vertical one I thought looked weird. It was thin and tall, kind of wonky looking. Uh, so I got the vertical one. And it's, it's really loud, uh, you know, for 20 watts. It's really loud. The speaker's really efficient and um, really bright. Uh, a lot of real, like, upper mids that really cut through. And it sounds great with the bands and everything, but uh, it was just too much. Um, so I still, of course, have the cab because it's the matching set. Uh, but I then went out and grabbed, uh, well, not in this order, but uh, I have one of these, uh, whatever it is, the um, MGX or whatever uh, cabinet. I got it super cheap. And I figured I'd give that a shot. Uh, behind here, you can't see it, but I have uh, a 412 uh, straight cab with uh, vintage, I mean at this point, like 80s, is 1980s is vintage, um, vintage greenbacks in it. Uh, the English ones, not the Chinese made ones. Um, the English ones just, they sound slightly different, better or worse, who knows. Um, but uh, with the um, greenbacks, I built this cab, which I have a video for so you could watch, and um, this sounds great. I grabbed some base cabs to run it through, seeing if that would tame some of the, the kind of ice pick highs and things. Uh, I don't know, a, a bunch of different things, and nothing was really doing it for me. So then I remembered a little tiny amp that I had built probably 20 something years ago and I grabbed a really inexpensive speaker a Jensen um, mod 820 8 inch little speaker in this little combo and it was killer when I put the speaker in I was like that's the sound so of course I'm not too bright so it dawned on me you know I'm gonna try running this through that little mod speaker Plugged it in, bam, that was the sound. So I immediately ordered two of the um, Mod 820s, so they're 8 inch, 20 watt, uh, 4 ohms because that's what the one in the cabinet was, uh, the, the little combo, I mean, um, 4 ohms, and I know that the voice coil is slightly different, 4 ohms can sound a little different than an 8 ohm speaker, whatever. So I wanted to go with the exact same. So, two fours uh, wired in series, <clears throat> excuse me, to give an 8 ohm load. And then on the bottom, I wanted something slightly different. So, I grabbed uh, a 10 inch, a mod 1050. I checked with somebody at uh, Jensen, and they said that uh, this could be a good complement. Um, they recommended a couple other 10 inch, but uh, not the mod series. 
But I figured, you know what, I, I had good luck with these, with the 820, the one single 820 that I bought, you know, a couple decades ago, uh, well, not, maybe not 15 years ago. Uh, so I figured I'd stay with the mod, and it sounds amazing. The speaker cabinets, um, and I did a video on building one of them, um, the speaker cabinet is just some old bookshelf speakers that I got at a, um, uh, like, uh, with the store, it was Savers, but it's, uh, in case you don't have Savers around you, I can't think of the name of it, um, uh, but it's like a, you know, Goodwill kind of a thing, um, and got these two, and it's like just a nice size, because this is a, an undersized head. So I didn't want, if I had the, the speaker cabinets, the width of the head, one, it's a little bit small, and two, I don't know if I'd be able to fit um, the two eight inch in it. And I like slightly oversized speaker cabinets. I think it gives a little more depth to the sound. Uh, so anyway, that's what I ended up with here. So I have two, and this is um, a single eight ohm. So two 8 ohm cabinets. <clears throat> I did this design here with the holes. These are just screws um, holding the speaker in from the other side. Uh, but these holes, this here, I think helps a little to cut some of that ice picky sound down a little bit. Uh, the bottom, being a bigger speaker, uh, more higher wattage, it's going to be a little less on the high-end um, screechy kind of end of things anyway. So I left the um, middle one there. And I also, this is a floating baffle, I guess, semi-floating, whatever. It's only f affixed to the actual cabinet here, 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 and here. So six places. And I put spacers on the speakers. So if you look on the back, if you'd open it up, the speakers are not flush against the wood on the other side. There's actually a gap. So sound waves can get out from the speaker itself, from the front of the speaker itself. And then this has a, you know, I don't know, uh, eight inch, almost a quarter inch ish gap. Uh, let's call it three sixteenths of an inch gap so that these screws here have spacers too. So that this is actually lifted completely clear of this back cabinet. So some sound is also getting out here. Uh, what I kind of figured was one, it would be mostly a closed back type of a um, cabinet, but some sound would get out all around to sort of fill the room a little more. And with these sort of in the way, it's a lot like um, if you have reverb, I always find that like natural reverb of course sounds, you know, the best, um, but it's not always, you know, possible. Um, a, a room with a lot of different surfaces will have a lot of different delay times on the reverb and make a really rich sounding reverb. So that's kind of what I was thinking with this. So different frequencies are all kind of getting scattered in hitting your ear at different times from the edges and from the holes. And I don't know if it works, but I think the cabinet sounds killer. Uh, both of them, you know, uh, the stack, I guess, sounds killer. And uh, so, subscribe and do all that jazz and like the video and all that and share and all that. And um, definitely any comments in the bottom, let me know what you think of this. Uh, I think it sounds really great. <laughs>
by the way, this is just the head. No pedals or boost or anything. <laughs> And it's on um, low output and input gain and lead master all the way up and uh, output master is just about halfway up so these speakers are not super efficient which I like because then you can crank the amp a bit more um, and you're not you know um, blowing yourself out of the room uh, but that's the deal so there's definitely a little more high end, um, a little more sort of uh, aggressiveness to the tone, I guess. Uh, which is fine, but uh, this guitar is, is plenty of high-end and plenty of aggression. Uh, Seymour Duncan JB pickup, uh, vintage, old. I picked it up in like the 80s, um, and it was used. It was an old. It was an older one then. Uh, but at any rate, that's about it. So let me know if you have any questions or comments or whatever. <laughs> I wait till the end of the video to play terribly. <laughs> <laughs>